What's going on guys, Victor here, and we got a giant pile of great eating fish in front of us. We got snapper, we got grouper, all caught in the Florida Keys with our good buddy, Captain Ryan of Good Karma Sport Fishing. I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked in the description box below. Now, before we move on, and we're gonna show you guys how to catch these, clean them, and cook them, a quick message from today's video sponsor, which is The Ridge. Today's video is brought to you by The Ridge Wallet. Ridge wallets are light, sleek, minimalist style wallets that don't fold or awkwardly bulge in your pocket. I used to be the guy carrying around the big fat leather wallet, carrying around a bunch of nonsense. And you know what? I got tired of carrying around old receipts, gift cards, and hotel keys that I'm probably never gonna use again. So The Ridge was the perfect answer to my unorganized mess. Ridge wallets hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash, and there's over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including carbon fiber and and my personal favorite, Burnt Titanium. The Ridge has over 30,000 five-star reviews and they'll even let you test drive it for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It also has RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. I've been using Ridge wallets for about a year now and can honestly tell you I love them and would never go back to the traditional fat style wallet ever again. You guys can get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash landshark and using my code landshark. It will also be linked in the description now enjoy today's video. So this is one thing I've always loved about the Keys. There's Yelltail all around the state, and we have plenty of Yelltail down by us, but you never see him balled up like you do in the Keys. If you guys look, all that little hints of yellow is literally all just Yelltails, all up and down, and they'll ball up. And you can get them by the thousands behind the boat. Oh, I got a trigger. Or ocean tally. This guy right here, second one of the day. Ocean tally, look at this jumbo. Which the meat on an ocean tally is a little bit tougher than a trigger fish. But you guys know, we love our trigger fish. So this is a really similar species to it, but they got a little bit of a different body structure and these fins are different on an ocean tally than they are a trigger. You guys aren't ready for this. Check out the little baby rod. The fish are getting super skittish and spooky. The yellowtail ball that we saw earlier is in here. We got live pilchards down, super light leader, and it's just, it's a, it's a tough grind today. You know, there's not much current. That's a big yellow tail. Is he? Yeah, it's a big yellow tail. And oh, I'm, I gotta finesse him, because it's yeah. only a 12 pound leader. You're gonna have to net this one. You can't flip him, he's, he's a little too big on that, on the 12 pound. Real light leader. That's a nice yellow tail. How big he is. Is he just foul? No, he's decent. A decent fish. It's real light leader. It's a 16 inch yellow tail. Yeah. And this is what, wouldn't you say 99% of people come to the Keys for this? Yeah, 99%, don't. yeah, they, everybody loves the yellow tail fish. Uh -huh. I love it too, but yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice little yellow tail on that little rod. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my clients get to look forward to you guys. You get to, <laughs> you get to play with baby rod, baby Yoda. You know, we could be yellow tail fishing, but we, Ryan asked us, what do you guys want to do? And we said, you know, we'd rather spend a lot of time and try to catch black grouper and muttons where we could have probably easily had our limit oh, of yellow tails by now. Yeah, we would have been done. Baby Yoda strikes again. Look at that. Oh, this is honestly like the perfect little yellow tail setup. I, I would totally have this for my clients. So when you're yellow tail fishing, yellow tails sit way back in the chum slick, especially when it's nice and bright and sunny and there's not a lot of current. And I just have a little chunk of bonita that I'm flatlining way back there. I'm talking like 75 feet behind the boat. And these things hit it so fast because they're just scooping it up in the middle of the water column. You close your bail, you got them on. <laughs> Another nice yellow tail. Now we are doing a little bit of drift fishing out deep. We did some black grouper and mutton fishing in shallow earlier. Goggle eye, very juicy bait. Great for bottom fish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna butterfly it. And when you butterfly a bait, it's gonna do two things. Number one, I think it it's a really cool presentation because when you're drifting in the current, your bait is kind of flapping down there like this. It gives it some, some action and also all of the oils and, and guts and everything. So you're creating a scent trail as well. Take your hook right here, hook them right up here, bottom of the lip, up through the top of the head. 
because you want your bait to be hydrodynamic and streamlined. As you're pulling it through the water, you want it to be going like this. You don't want to hook it up here, otherwise it's going to be dragging sideways. You need it to be nice and streamlined. Absolute perfect drift day. We have zero have current. More current up here? We have zero current out here. Like, I mean, like a, a knot. We're all fishing live bottom, 240 foot. Okay, so then this is the second bait we're going to fish. A little pilcher, so we're going to do one dead bait, one live bait. It's good to have a variety. A little circle hook, 40 pound fluorocarbon. All right, we're on. A little much? Yeah, it, fe it feels pretty small on that big old goggle eye. We're fishing real, real deep water. It's kind of tough when you get a bite. Come on in. Oh man, he is blown up. So this is what happens when you catch a mutton in really deep water. Fish have air bladders. They can't compensate for the pressure difference. So what we gotta do is vent them. All right, I got myself another deep water mutton. We have lost two, one to a shark, a couple of pulled hooks. And it's really tough because when you're fishing this deep, um, Ryan's gotta time it perfectly to where we drop our baits and they're on bottom and we drift over it, just a little rock pile. And trying to coordinate that in 300 feet is not easy. But this feels like a good fish. And I'm just trying to get him in as fast as possible because I don't want to get another shark attack. Or you just got a really big one. And to bend that rod, that rod's pretty, that's a big rod. Find out here in a second, real. Right? Yeah. He's red. Oh, baby, look at that one right there. Nice. nice deep water mountain. There we go. All right. Woo. Woo. What do you think about that? That's a beauty I, right there. Look, he freed you a lot. He did. He swallowed it. I think you're a dad. Brian, I know you're watching. I know this is what you want right here. We got fresh mutton snapper for dinner for you. Brawled all the way to the end. Yeah. When you guys, when you guys heard, uh, Ryan, you want to explain when you say they float? Yeah, so what happens is their swim bladders will pop, but sometimes the bigger mutton, they'll fight you all the way to from up. You know, we're fishing in over 300 foot of water and he fought it. He was a he was an ornery one. Yeah, a lot a lot of times they'll completely stop fighting, and your lead will be here, and you'll see him 50 feet back there, just floated up with their belly out. And as you see, that's his stomach right there, all popped. If you're ever interested in booking a trip in the Keys, uh, Ryan's out of Tavernier Creek. What was so special about today was we really got to do a variety of different types of reef fishing. Yeah. We got to do the stationary anchor fishing. We really stuck in there to try for the black grouper. We fished through the tide and we got one. Ryan fished yesterday morning and had like seven muttons and a 35 pound black grouper all within like four hours. Yeah, and four because, hours. And it's because yeah. you had a current, right? Yeah, you had current. We didn't have any sharks yesterday. So it's amazing. You wake up to a completely different ocean yeah. this morning. It was completely different. So we had to adjust and make several adjustments to find a decent fish at that find fish that didn't have sharks around yeah. them. So But you had to trick up every single sleeve. Yeah. He's like, alright, I got a plan for this, this, and this. And we caught fish all day long. So we'll catch you guys at the flight. Now recently I started a separate channel just for cooking, which I'm gonna have on the screen here as well as linked below. Because I'm really passionate about seafood and teaching people the different ways to cook seafood. And I did do a fish head soup recipe on there, but I've never done one on the actual channel. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do a fish head soup. It is very easy and I know it can be intimidating, but it all starts with the fish. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do for a fish head soup is scale your fish. Because when you're, you're making it, you're gonna be using the head and, and the majority of the carcass and you don't want any scales in your soup. So to scale a fish, all you have to do this is an actual scaler, but you could literally use a, a butter knife, a fork, a spoon, anything, and just run whatever tool you have from the tail to the head against the grain of the scale. And you'll see it just knocks them all off. And scales are something that will ruin your appetite if you get them in your dinner. So you definitely do not want them in your dinner. Don't forget to scale underneath here, the throat. And they don't have a ton of scales on their head, but they do have a few you got to get off. So the key to a good tasty fish head soup is proper cleaning of the fish first. Got to get rid of the guts. So what I'm going to do here, that's the mutton's butt right there. I'm going to take the tip of my knife. I'm going to run up all the way through into the throat. Okay, so that's going to open up the gut cavity. 
and we want to make sure we remove all of these guts. Once we removed a majority of the guts, I'm going to take the hose and squirt inside the gut cavity. I am going to squirt in there one more time, but first I'm actually going to fillet this fish and then we'll have even more access to the gut cavity and, and the gills and everything. Check that out. Flayed out mutton snapper. Now you might think, this is waste. I'm going to throw it in the canal. That couldn't be further from the truth. You have all the meat in between the spine that you can't get with your knife. You have the rib cage, the belly, the throat, the collar. You have the cheek. There's just so much hidden meat in the head. You guys will see. If you ever have a ton of carcasses, I'm really excited to show you guys this fish head soup recipe. So just to make it smaller and easier to work with in our pot, I'm just gonna break the uh, spine from the head. And since this snapper isn't that big, I should be able to just rip it right off. And um, you know, I can kind of just break this up into smaller pieces because we are gonna just cook it and just peel all the meat off and get all that good seafood flavor from the bones want to remove the gills because the gills is something you do not want in your soup. I'm just going to rip right there. Just kind of find where they're attached and just lightly, they don't need much. Just kind of separate them. Now they pull right out. You don't want to be eating that. That will make your soup taste bitter. Now Burke's going to stand far back because this is going to get messy. So we already sprayed in the gut cavity once, but now we just want to get rid of any blood. So fish head soup 101, I've only made it once, I'm no expert, but it's fairly easy to make. And if you've ever made any type of broth, chicken soup, a beef broth, a pork broth, the main thing is you're extracting the flavors from the protein. So in this case, it's the fish, right? We have the carcasses, we have the head. Deep within the bones, there's just so much flavor that we often neglect and that all that flavor goes away when you flay a fish and you just eat you know, the outside of it. So you don't have to get too carried away with the things um, that are an accessory to the main flavor. The main flavor of the soup is coming from the fish itself, but to freshen it up, we're gonna add some parsley, some onion, bay leaf, garlic, some thyme, and then celery. So literally, just go in your pantry or fridge, see what kind of fresh herbs and veggies you have, and just kind of see what flavors go together. You know, there's so many different combinations and some people do like a coconut based soup, tomato broth based soup, which I'm gonna do today. Last time I did a real clear broth. So the first thing I'm doing, like I said earlier at the fillet table, you do not want any gills or blood in your fish. This fish has been heavily scaled, cleaned, gutted, rinsed. I made sure there's no blood, no guts, nothing. And just look at how much meat is in there. You guys are gonna be surprised when I boil all this, we are gonna extract so much delicious flavor and meat from all these fish. And I, I think the neatest thing about this video is, you know, last time I did a fish head soup, it was with one species. This time we got grouper, we have mutton snapper, we also have yellowtail snapper head, and then finally, way down here, we also have mangrove snappers, so I don't think you can get better than that. That's the quadfecta of fish head soup. I have some olive oil. And what a lot of people will do is they will make, um, they'll cook down their vegetables first, and then the fish and then that, but I'm doing the opposite this time. I'm gonna do the veggies last. The more bones, the more head, the more of the fish you have, you're gonna get a really rich, deep stock. So now we're gonna add our veggies. Just half, two halves, of a whole onion, parsley, some celery, the thyme going in, three garlic cloves whole, and all of these ingredients are going to be um, discarded. We're just making the stock right now. Black peppercorns. So I want just enough to cover up the fish and all the ingredients. We're gonna bring that to a boil. Brought it up to a boil, reduce the heat to about medium, you want a real slow simmer, okay? I boiled or simmered mine for about an hour and I have removed all of the veggies and all of the bones, the carcass, and you guys see this color. It almost looks like a, um, like a, a vegetable or a chicken broth. It is very mild in flavor. I really, you guys are gonna hear me say this over and over again in this video. If you're a fisherman and you've never had fish head soup, 
please try it. It will surprise you like you wouldn't believe. It is so good. And then this right here, if you ever wanted to make like a seafood stew or a paella, anything that requires a seafood stock, hello, you got it right there. And it is incredibly easy to make. So what I'm gonna do is, I want a very clear broth. So I'm gonna strain it. And I'm just gonna strain it through a sieve. That way, you know, just in case there were any scales or anything in there that you don't want in your soup, we're gonna end up with a really good liquid. All right, so here's all the fish, and I guarantee you, we're gonna get close to filling this almost all the way up with fish. And this is the same thing that you would find on your filet. White meat, parts of the fish. Use your hands, wait until it cools down a little bit, and just start picking it off. It's very easy to tell what is good meat and what's not. It's not gonna poison you, it's not gonna kill you. It's just fish. All right, so I've taken over separating the bones from the meat. It's just crazy how much meat there is that you wouldn't expect. There is a lot of like weird stuff. A lot of slimy stuff. I'm not gonna lie, there is a lot of slimy stuff. But so you, just, you just get rid of the slimy stuff and you take out the good meat. Look at that, that's full. But there's it's just full of meat. Full of fish. You just pull it out. Um, look at this, part of someone's jaw, the teeth. See all the meat coming off the bones, off just the like that. And that is, you know, if you run your filet knife and you take the filet off, you go over there, you're never getting the meat in between the actual uh, bones. It's fun, I think it'd be a good project for kids. So as Brooke's doing this, I just have some little, little honey gold potatoes cut up. Those are gonna go in the soup first because they're gonna take the longest to cook. I'm gonna tell you guys about a little secret. This seasoning is Vegeta. And I know a lot of people say I pronounce it wrong, but that's the way you pronounce it where I come from, from Slovakia. This stuff is so good. Not sponsored or anything, we just absolutely love it. We sprinkle it on chicken, put it in soup, season our vegetables with it. It's a very unique blend of flavors, a very fresh flavor. So the, this is the only dry spice I'm putting in our entire soup. And I'm not gonna salt our soup because if it gets us very salty to begin with. So I'm just gonna start with a little bit of that. I'll have a link below in the description so you guys can check it out. Because I'm telling you, it is a game changer. So the potatoes have been for about 10 minutes. Now I have a blend of zucchini, carrot, parsnips, kohlrabi, uh, leek, celery, carrot, just a bunch of veggies you'd normally put in a soup. We're gonna dump all of this into there, into there. So the last time I made fish head soup, I was seriously lacking on the vegetables and we definitely don't have that problem this time. And if I wanna add some water to it, I might, but I kinda like the consistency right now. So watch this, this is how we do fish head soup. First of all, nice big Dutch oven, keeps everything warm. Take a look in here, Brookie. You have your potato, zucchini, parsnips, kohlrabi, onion, celery, and then the broth. The broth is the king in the soup. And what I did is I took about half a cup of those honey gold potatoes, mashed them up, and it gives the soup kind of a, a little thicker consistency, right? And then Brooke pulled apart most of the fish, so thank you, babe. And I told you guys, there's a lot of fish. That's from four carcasses and four heads. That is a tremendous amount of waste if you actually throw it in a canal or wherever you're doing it. You would never know there's that much fish off four, four carcasses. So what I like to do is, you know, we, we do multiple bowls, but you give every person about that much fish from the beginning. You come over here, you get a big scoop of your fish head soup. And tell me that doesn't look good. Not only does it look good, but this is so healthy for you. There's, there's almost, I don't think there's any fat in there. It's just all good stuff, natural stuff. This fish head soup was gorgeous. All the colors in there, and then when you start eating it, it's as delicious as it is pretty. And then you just know everything in there is so healthy. So it was like a, a, a triple whammy was was killer. Mama, I think like this it? added 10 years to my life. <laughs> <laughs> It is so good and healthy. Every little thing tastes so good. I can't get over it. It's amazing. I want to see someone pop that. <laughs> I can't say anything after that. I really enjoyed the soup, but I had to point out to Victor that when I try things like fish head soup, you could 
even the name of it, you're kind of reluctant. You're like, I don't know what to expect. And it does have flavors that you're not used to. And you need to just kind of like honor it and not just pick out a, a new taste that you're not used to. But it definitely, for someone who doesn't have a palate that's used to fish head soup, you will, you'll have to eat it and really give it, a, give it a chance because it is amazing, but it will surprise you. Very yeah. well said. Yeah. yeah. I will say when I first thought of having fish head soup, I was really nervous about it. I thought it was going to be really fishy, putting the heads in there and everything. It's not fishy whatsoever. It gives you this really deep, good flavor and it's just absolutely amazing and it blows your mind how much meat you can get out of the pieces that you normally just toss in. It makes going out there and getting your catch that much greater knowing that you're using every single part of it and not wasting any of the fish. Thank you for sharing new recipes with us and making um, food more interesting. Kind of getting a rut of eating the same things all the time, so it's, it's great. The sustainability aspect, it doesn't get any better. You're literally using every inch of the fish. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.